individual atoms. Chemical bonds form because it lowers the potential energy between the particles. So all atoms are composed of positive and negative particles, protons and neutrons, I mean protons and electrons, and then there are neutrons in there as well. But those charged particles interact with each other. And a chemical bond will form when you reach a lower potential energy state as a result of the combination between those particles. So if we think about two atoms approaching each other, there's a lot of different interactions. Um, the electrons are going to repel each other because like charges repel. The nuclei are also going to repel each other. But the electrons and the nuclei are attracted to each other. The protons and the nuclei and the electrons outside are going to be attracted to each other. So we get this interaction of all these different forces and a bond will form if those interactions result in a reduction in the energy. In an ionic bond, you have metals and nonmetals. Metals have low ionization energies, which means they tend to lose electrons forming cations. Nonmetals have negative electron affinities, which means that they are receptive to accepting an electron and then they become an anion. Now you have a positive and a negative, and they're attracted to each other. And that interaction between the positive and negative an um, ions is what we call an ionic bond. Um, here's a summary of the three types of bonds. Ionic, which we just talked about, there the electrons are transferred from one element, one atom to another. And then we're going to talk about covalent bonds. These are between nonmetals. And here we have electrons being shared instead of transferred. And then we have metallic bonds. This, these occur between metals, between metal atoms. And here, the electrons we say are pooled. It's like a, a sea of electrons. So covalent bonds involve sharing. And we can uh, kind of get that from this name. Co means to share. Like co-sleeping means sleeping with someone, right? Covalent, sharing of ele valence electrons. So when nonmetals interact, they share some electrons. Um, those shared electrons interact with the nucleus from each atom. So here we have um, here we have an electron, and here we have one nucleus and another nucleus. And if this electron is over here, um, there's some attraction here. Um, if we put this electron right in between. This is going to be the most stable situation where this electron is between the two nuclei. Um, if we put the electron over here, um, this is less stable. So in the center here, we see that the potential energy is lowered when that electron is between the nuclei, when it's shared. It holds those two nuclei together, and that's what we call a covalent bond. Metallic bonding is between metal atoms. When we talk about ionic bonding, we talk about metals are, they lose electrons fairly easily. Well, in a, a pure metal or a mixture of metals, there's no nonmetal to accept electrons, so we can't have ionic bonds forming. But we know from experience that metals stay together pretty well, right? You know, your cars metal parts, the chair that you're sitting on is metal, it doesn't seem to be falling apart, right? So something's holding those atoms together. Um, the simplest model for metallic bonding is called the electron C model. And so all the atoms in this solid are going to pool their valence electrons. And those electrons then are delocalized over the entire metal um, and the positive nuclei are attracted to that sea of electrons. Okay, does that make much sense? No, it's kind of a weird description. So let's visit chemistry land. It's my happy place. So I think of this metallic bonding as being a lot like um, a neighborhood. The electrons are children. And so the children are just, you know, they go out and play. And they just roam throughout the neighborhood. And in each house, you have a mom. And the mom is like the nucleus of the family, right? So you have all these moms, and the kids are just out there playing. The kids being out there playing together kind of unites the whole neighborhood. Because you know your kid's out there, but these other kids are out there too. 
and there's an attraction of the moms to all the children, and it's kind of like a group effort keeping these kids safe. So the electrons are free to move around in a metallic solid. It holds together because each of those positive nuclei are attracted in general to this whole sea of electrons. And this concept helps us to understand some of the characteristics of metals, but we're not going to get into that. Does the neighborhood help at all? I got at least one nod, so we'll, we'll call that success.